We continue to preview the 2023 college football season, and it's a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Coach Robert Curtin. Our stop today is Laurenburg, North Carolina, and we are going to be talking about St. Andrews football. Coach, thank you very much for taking time with us here, and let's just get started. I know that uh, spring has already come and gone. We're into the summer right now. Talk about the spring there in Laurenburg. How did things go for you and for the Knights? Uh, yes, sir. I appreciate you having us on. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to stop in here at St. Andrews. You know, we're a young team. It's going to be our seventh season. Uh, we, you know, from us, this is the first spring that I, I've had with the program. First spring that our offensive coordinator and defense coordinator have had, but we're really, we're really excited for the spring that we had. You now we had a great blue white game. We, we filled the stands uh, with friends and family and community members. Uh, and we brought back uh, close to 60 you know, returning players that were on the squad last year. And so that, that gives us a really good base to, to head into fall camp with, with about 75, 80 uh, freshmen and transfers from other, uh, other great institutions. So really, really happy about our spring ball. Well, that sounds like a really solid number there, especially of, of young players and players new to the program. Coach, 1-10 in 10 last season. Let's go ahead and move on into 2023. Andrew Fowler, at the helm for you as quarterback, played in all 11 games for you last season. He graduates, but he's not leaving the program. Now, of course, that means you've got to have somebody there to, to take over this year. You'll have a little competition in the fall, but tell us about Fowler and then talk about uh, what we might see at quarterback. Yes, so we're, we're really excited about Andrew. Andrew is a uh, – Fowler is a very hard-nosed young man. Uh, his, his dad's been a coach for 25-plus years at, at the high school and at the, the collegiate level. Uh, so what Andrew brings in is our, you know, our, uh, you know, QB one of last year. He brings in an understanding of the what the offensive coordinator wants and, and the systems that we want to put in place. Um, he's very calm. He's very cool and under uh, under pressure. What's really good though is, is is Andrew's tough as woodpecker lips. He is has no fear of putting his nose in there and and, and doing what he needs to do. Um, but with him gone. You know, we, we brought in uh, three quarterbacks for the spring. We're going to bring in another three come this fall. And our quarterback race is wide open. You know, we've got a couple guys from the D2 ranks that came in, and we've got a couple uh, – we've got one D1 guy that's coming in. Um, it was a walk-on elsewhere. So we, our competition is, is wide open for quarterback, and uh, we're excited for it too. We're really excited. Um, so uh, right now we think, you know, with the what we saw in, in in the spring, we liked what we had from our two quarterbacks. We liked what they showed us. Um, both of them had strengths, you know. Both of them had um, some weak things that they need to work on. You know, I think uh, no secret, Jalen Dodd uh, coming out of uh, Carson Newman had a you know had an exceptional exceptional spring game. Uh, but uh, we're, we're excited to see what's what's going to unfold this fall, come August third and fourth when. Guys, start re returning to us, Coach. I think it's always good when there's competition in, in even into fall camp, not just from the spring and the summer, but into fall camp there because it does push those players, and and it also then can reveal some depth that you may not have have been aware of as well, uh, Coach. Uh, from the the remainder of your offense, and and it was an offense that, that struggled a little bit last year. However, uh, with that in mind, you know, Fowler, uh, one of the leaders also on the ground game, too, as a second on the team in, in rushing yards. You, you lose some of the players there uh, that uh, were part of the backfield. Can you tell us a little bit about what the backfield may look like? Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, losing Andrew back there, you know, Jalen runs the ball really exceptionally well as well. Uh, so does our, our, you know, both of those quarterbacks are coming back. But um, we will bring back uh, Antirius Carpenter. Uh, you know, number 42, he was a freshman and we'll bring back Tiger Williams or Eldrick is his official name. Eldrick, we'll bring those two young men back. Um, we're going to run the same inside power game. So, you know, inside a gap game, we're not going to change anything. We're very transparent about that, especially in our recruiting. We've got two phenomenal kids coming in uh, out of North Carolina, uh, both big time four a running backs, uh, uh, Kayvon and Najir. Um, you know, from uh, West Brunswick and uh, Pinecrest High School, respectively. And we are really excited about those two and the way they're going to bolster that backfield. Uh, again, they're freshmen, so there's a there's a learning curve and, and there's an adjustment period. Um, but knowing those two programs that they're coming from, 
uh, I think is, is, is put us in a place where, okay, we have what, somewhere where we can start. Um, they have both been you know, incredibly responsive. They've both been, they both just finished up their high school spring track and now they've already been hitting you know, the site and, and knocking out their workouts and showing us their updates and everything. So we're really excited about having, bringing them, them two young men and a couple others into the fold. So, and, and, and every position at running back is up for competition and we make, everyone knows it's, we're going to compete <laughs> the entire year. That's fantastic, Coach. And also, you have to you have to love it when when you've got players that uh, are competing for a running back position that are also track stars too. That's uh, that's got to be a, an oh, yeah. added bonus. There, we're speaking now with Coach Robert Curtin from St. Andrews. Who, by the way, Coach Curtin, uh, with more than two decades of service in the United States Army, and I want to take the time to say thank you, sir, for your service, and and I appreciate that so much. Uh, Coach, also I'll stay with the office just a little bit more. Aronson Cook, a name that is someone, it is coming back for you uh, led the team for uh, from the position of wide receiver and also your punter too so we talk a little special teams while we're at it yes yeah, so uh yeah cook is a very very disciplined football player he's he's very uh his work ethic is beyond reproach um we you know when i showed up i was like wow you know nice to have this kid just hang out for another year i didn't, didn't wasn't sure whether we were going to lose him to everything and uh I think he saw the way we wanted to get after things, um, but it's nice to have him back um, at wide receiver. And he does do some other things. I will be honest with you, sir, though. We have been recruiting hard for punters and, uh, <laughs> and uh, some kickers, um, but he will be our backup for sure. And he had a good, good season punting, but it's just, we, we want him to focus really in and on, on his position, uh, especially with a new quarterback, uh, some new running backs, potentially in the mix. Um, we need to be as precise out on the edges as we can get. Uh, we don't need a whole lot of uh, questioning. What ifs? Should I have done this? Should I? <clears throat> excuse me. Cook will bring that that le legitimacy to us out there on, on the edge that we need. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I appreciate the transparency too. I, I like that word. We talked about that just a little bit off the air. But I think is there? Can you go wrong having depth in every area? I mean, even special teams. I mean, why not? You, you recruit that and, and get those players in there. Coach, look at the defense really quickly, and I'd, I'd love to give you the opportunity and to talk us through yes, the sir. defense. I, I, I would start a couple of names that are coming back. Uh, Jalen Allen, freshman, uh, was a freshman last year, defensive back. Uh, Laverius Heath Lewis also in the secondary as well. And one of the things that stood out to me was that the fact that there were a, a number of young players in the secondary. Not That stands out as a little bit, but also it was the secondary making a lot of tackles too. So the ball getting into that – uh, next level too. talk about those players coming back and, and some of the adjustments then to uh, try to get the ball stopped a little earlier. Oh, yes. I mean, that is absolutely one of our folks is, uh, you know, the front seven um, being a, you know, traditionally a defensive minded guy myself um, <clears throat> who likes to dabble in the offense and, and you know, just uh, <laughs> make sure that things look sexy and flashy. But I really think the defense needs to be solid. Heath is going to, uh, and, and had a great spring, by the way. His, his spring was very good. But he understands, like, his role now, it's grown. Like, he's going to be a leader. He's going to be required to help us coach up and mentor some of the young guys. And, and he's, he's all for the challenge. He's got over three-point GPA. He's invested in our community. He does things with, with kids outside of our community, out in Laurenburg and, and the Scotland area. Um, so we're excited that he's coming back. Um, we're also excited that, uh, you know, Jalen Allen's coming back. And, and they were young guys put in a very, very precarious position. It is tough to be out there on an island, especially when we were struggling in the front seven. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, again, in, in the name of transparency, I will tell you that we revamped our entire defense. We're, we're, we're no longer doing the 4-2. We'll be in a 3-4. Uh, we've recruited in, uh, uh, quite a few, you know, edge players. And, and uh, outside linebackers, because that's what we need. Um, and, uh, you know, we bring back Austin Hunt. Uh, you know, we, we, we've, I failed to, to, to mention him earlier, sir, but Austin Hunt is, you know, he was our leading tackler the last two years, 122, 123 tackles. He'll be a fifth-year senior. And, uh, you know, we're going to create something special around that young man uh, and require those same leadership qualities and responsibilities that we do of Heath. Um, and But we understand – you know, we need to stop the ball at the front seven. The nose guard, the 
the nose guards that we've been going after, they need to be dynamic. They need to take on two people every time that the, the ball is snapped. Uh, and they need to ha- know how to fight through that. Um, and then our outside linebackers need to be long, lean, athletic, and dynamic. And that's what we went after in the offseason. We bring back, you know, a couple couple young guys that uh, did really well. Um, but, again, we're going to compete. Like, come August 5th, is, you know, the first day we put on our, our you know, our, our equipment, our kit, every, you know, and, and I like to say this a lot, you know, we've selected you to come here to St. Andrews. You selected us. But selection is an ongoing process. And just because you make the roster doesn't mean you made it. You know, just because you got in a couple plays on special teams, or we're going to continue selection for your position will always be an ongoing process. And we're going to continue to evaluate each and every one of you. We really need to pick it up on defense. Um, and, you know, coming from a defensive mindset, we, we, we did not do as well as we could have or should have last year. And, and we're going to you know, try to make some changes. Uh, uh, we've got a new defensive coordinator in. I've worked with him before when I was the interim head coach out of Pinecrest. He worked as my special teams coordinator and a linebackers coach. And I brought him here last year. Now I've moved him up uh, to a defensive coordinator. And, and he understands what I want out of the 3-4. And, and he's run it. He's played it. Um, so we're, you know, we're hoping to see some gains on the defensive side of the ball. So our offense up for success. Um, and then in, and in, in reality, we bring in Mike, uh, Coach Mike McClure, uh, our special teams coordinator. And I think those two uh, facets of the game are so intertwined because so many of your defensive players, you know, their first, the, the way they cut their teeth is, is on that special teams. You know, your, your backup linebackers, your backup DBs, your outside linebackers, that's where they cut their teeth. And that's where we see, that's where the measuring stick starts. And so we're excited that those two get, I'm excited. They get along really well. Their, their, their interplay uh, on the sidelines has been phenomenal. Uh, and so well, I'll leave it there because I know I've been talking a whole lot and I apologize. No, Coach, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying that. I appreciate learning about the team and learning about the program like that. I'm, this is one of those conversations I, I could listen for another 30 minutes because I, I, I appreciate the hearing hearing about the Knights. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up then with this. Uh, the schedule gets underway pretty quickly. You were talking about August 5th, camp gets uh, gets started. And then, I mean, it's just three weeks right after that. Season starts week zero. You're at home, and you get to take on Weber and, and host Weber there, sister school. So that should be a, an interesting matchup. Uh, next week, you take on Lindsey Wilson, also at home. Uh, go on the road at Bethel. Those were a couple of teams that uh, did well last year and have been doing well. A uh, little bit of a break before you go on the road again to take on Davison, uh, up a level or two there. So uh, season gets underway, and and it's uh, you're going to have to hit the hit the ground running. Yes, sir. And, and I'll be honest, you know, having a schedule like that is a double edged sword. Uh, as we try to create something special, as we try to build something, you want challenges, uh, but you don't necessarily want them week in and week out. Uh, you you'd like to have them maybe every other week, um, but but I will tell you this. Um, playing Weber is an absolute must. We need to play them. They're our sister school. I think a, a, a wonderful rivalry could come from that. And, uh, you know, we played Lindsey Wilson last year at Lindsey Wilson, and they scuffed us up really bad. Um, but what was most uh, prominent to me in that entire uh, scenario was that that coaching staff, that head coach, they were a class act. Um, you know, I think we lost 58 or something to nothing, and it could it could have been – far greater, but it was a very classy program. We grew from it. Uh, The experience, I know uh, most people would argue with that, but, uh, you know, as a coach, I learned how to, to, to win and lose, to win it gracefully as he did, Uh, you know, not throw salt in the wound, but uh, get all his guys in and then give us an opportunity to get better. Um, We're going to get that again this year. (laughs) One of the best teams in the country. And then we'll turn around and we'll get the, probably their biggest rival, which would be Bethel in their conference. And, uh, you know, we just look for the same thing. We're going to try to get small gains each and every week. Uh, and then, you know, Davidson, boy, they're, they are a powerhouse. They're a class act as well. Um, I really, really respect uh, those those two coaches at Will, Lindsey Wilson and, and Davidson um, because it gives us an opportunity to, to show and showcase who we are, but allow – when we're recruiting – we're able to tell kids, you know what, young man, if you want to come to St. Andrews and you think you are as special as you are, well, we're going to give you those opportunities. 
you're going to get those chances against Lindsey Wilson and Bethel, you know, and then Davidson, and then on down the road we'll go to Reinhardt. Uh, so it's a uh, it's a good schedule. It's uh, it's one that I'm kind of eating. Uh, it was kind of pre-made before I got here, and uh, <laughs> it's I certainly don't want this team or our young men to 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 shy away from a challenge. We've got we've got to show up ready to roll. All right, Coach. Well, it's it's not going to be long until you get that opportunity to roll. So we're looking forward to, to to watching you all this season. We're going to be following the Knights. Coach Robert Curtin from St. Andrews, thank you so much for taking time with us today. We appreciate that as we're continuing to preview the 2023 football season. Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you very much. We, you know, we obviously appreciate the uh, opportunity to come out here and, and talk about St. Andrews and our program. It's It means a lot to us, and it's definitely going to help us grow. So appreciate you and everything you do for – kids and sports.